So, but, so how did you still get into buying commercial real estate? Because you didn't own that property. We right? didn't own that property. So now, and so we just bought, this was at the beginning of this year. So uh, so what happened was around last November. So we're going, everything's going well. And and I know that we don't want to sign this lease again, right? Because it's about to come up where he's going to like, yo, we want you to sign three to five years. And so I'm like, nah. So we started looking, looking, looking. And um, we wound up uh, finding a property that was like literally less than a mile. Long story short, we and we don't have any affiliation with this uh, business, but they had a daycare center. Um, there was a standalone building less than a mile north of where we currently are. It's 10,000 square feet. We only had capacity in the space that we were leasing for 84 kids. This daycare center has capacity for 165 kids. They wound up getting into a situation where it was you know, they had to shut down, right? Without going too deep into their business, uh, they had to shut it all down. So we looked at it, we was like, man, we're going less than a mile north. It allows us to double our capacity and we have a standalone building. I went after it. So we went after it, uh, wound up getting a bank to, to like the first bank that we had. So we were already, here's another thing that I guess would help to, to know. So as we're looking for this space, one of my partners comes to me and he's like, yo, we got a vacant lot. You know, it's it's probably about two miles away from where our current location is. Y'all should bring a daycare and put it here. So he was like, oh, okay. So then we wound up signing and doing that. Okay, we're going to do it. So we already got that one paperwork. Everything's in motion. This was probably back in last May, right? When we first originally signed off on everything. Now this building comes about. This building, they got it listed for $2.7 million, right? So we like, oh, okay, well, we want to get it. If we can get this thing at like $2.4 million, it would be great. So we wound up losing out on the building that we're going after with the 165 kids. We wound up losing out on that building two times, right? Last year in August was when we first started pursuing it. Both of the other people, buyers, wind up falling out. Then we're getting ready to do a second build out, a build to suit. And the day before we sign the lease, the real estate agent, the commercial agent that's on the, the property that we were trying to buy, he calls me up. He's like, hey, these buyers are about to fall out. We all still got any interest in it. So I'm like, okay, let's see. Like, what can we do? So we wound up getting that deal together. We wound up purchasing that building, $2.2 million. Uh, we got everything included in it. So keep in mind, this was like a daycare in a box because they had all of the cots. They had everything already in it. And so we wound up getting that building. Uh, we got it appraised, $2.85 million, and that was how we got that one. And so we closed on that in January, and we owned the building. So we wound up moving from our location where we were leasing to the location that we got now. And then we also got the other one that we signed off on that we're building. And once that one's all appraised out, that one's 11,000 square feet, be state of art, brand new. So once that one's all done, it'll be worth 3.7. So the, the first one that you wanted to get it for 2.4, did you get it for 2.4? We got it for 2.2. You got it even less. We got it even less. And so now you're 600 in equity because yep, it appraised at 2.8. Yeah. So that's that's the 6.5 million right there. That's the 6.5 million. Two daycare centers. Two K day, daycare centers. Okay. So, so how, how many kids can fit? Because you said the square footage is important. So how many, 11,000 square feet permits you to have how many kids? Uh, so in, in Nebraska, it depends on the storm shelters. Uh, right, so so it's storm shelters. Not even tornadoes. About this. Yep, for tornadoes and all that. So it's not about how big the building is; it's about how big did they build the storm shelter. So that was the problem. We had seventy five hundred square feet in the building that we was leasing, but it only had because of the size of the storm shelter, we only had capacity for eighty four kids. Right, and the fire marshal will come in there because every single year when you're licensed by the state, they have all these different requirements. Like it's five point five square feet per person, not just kid, but that's teachers and kids included. Mm -hmm. So you got to go off of that. So that's what makes it different in Nebraska. It's all about your storm shelter. Yeah, but I mean, you, the story is just so like crazy. How, when did you start <laughs> learning about all the intricacies of being a daycare owner, right? Because you're coming from a real estate agent to now a real estate investor. Now you got a daycare. Obviously it's a business, but you need to know all the legalities. So like, what, like yeah. Is it you and your wife? You're just figuring this out. Like, who, what, what, how y'all, how y'all doing this? Yeah, yeah. So, 100% my wife. I got to give her all of the credit, right? Obviously, I do all of the marketing, got a marketing firm. I do all of the marketing. I also built all the relationships, right? Now, that's from the outside in. So, when I say relationships, I meant with the lenders, with the commercial agents, with everything else. But as far as like the, that was her dream, her baby, right? So, when people ask me, like, for me, I've always been a hustler, I've always been able to go out and get it and build relationships. But this is where I feel like for me, 
I got an opportunity to take it to the next level because I saw my wife and she was trying to get out of what you would call corporate America. She's got no degree, no nothing. Now I'm literally, I'm able to do whatever I want to do. Cause real estate, right? I could, if you want to see a property at 4 PM, I could go show you that property. I could be back at home with the kids. Maybe I got another client so I can maneuver how I wanted to. Whereas for her, she's inside eight to five all day. So I could see that she just wasn't happy. So when we got this opportunity, I looked at it as a way to be able to make sure that my kids could see that their mom could also go after her dream as well. Like think about it. My daughter now, she'll never have to grow up thinking that she has to work for somebody else. Right. So this was that opportunity for me because my wife's always believed in me, always believed in me. I mean, the whole journey of the real estate. So that's why I always got to give her the credit mm -hmm. and I can never. And so that was her passion. She knew from a rip. I mean, we had a date. Oh, we had a daycare in our home back when we was, what, 20 years old. This was back in Sioux City. But we had friends, right, that she was watching their kids. Mm. So then they was bartending, they was doing whatever. So then they'd come in and be like, hey, my check wasn't that much, that, you know, serving. <laughs> and so she's like, the, yo, I don't got as much to pay you this week. I ain't got it's, it. Right, I ain't got it. Can I get you next week? It's like, wait, that's not how this works. Like, this is a real business I'm trying to run here. So she got burned out on that right away, right? So this opportunity, when I saw that I had a chance to be able to speak life into her and allow her to be able to go after her dream, I jumped all in on it. So with the daycare, I always got to make sure like yeah I was on the backside and yes I signed my name on it but this has always been her passion her dream and everything and she's in there so she was the active director just now now that obviously we're in Dallas and we got two daycare centers now she's obviously started to understand the real game of entrepreneurship and building up leaders but before that these last three years and everything of how we I mean at one point the toughest thing about daycare and uh for a lot of people they, they see all of the money in it and don't get me wrong I mean you think about 235 uh dollars per week times, let's say 165 kids, even on a low end at 100 kids, right? You look at that times 52 weeks, like r right away, banks love them numbers, right? On the low end for us this year, off of just one center, it'll be 1.2 million, right? Just on a low end. And uh, that's a revenue coming in. Now, obviously you got to pay out your staff, you got to do other things, but there's a lot of ways for you to subsidize those types of things, right? Government loves daycare centers. Just going to ask that, like right? government funding, I'm sure. Lots of government funding, yeah. right? Well, you just got to know about it, but you got to also have the relationships with the lenders. You got to also have the relationships with um, DHHS, right? Any of the places, because if you don't, then they don't tell you about it. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And on top of that, they got to know that you run in a business that, you know, at the end of the day, it's something that is going to be sustainable. So she's done that. Um, her vision of everything of how she wanted the leadership, how she wanted the culture. And we got great staff at the daycares. Um, so that was the thing. And the other thing I think is what allowed us to be able to grow so fast is we had a couple of different things of what we knew, how we were going to be different. Number one is the focus on diversity. Right. I think for a lot of centers, like when you're building out the find the foundation of a young child's mind, you got to make sure that you promote diversity. And that was one of the things that we was able to articulate very well, which allowed us to grow very fast. And then the other thing um, was the culture of we're not just a babysitting place. Like she let that be known from the beginning. Like we're not, you're not just bringing your kid to us and we're going to babysit. Like literally we're going to teach him. We got a curriculum. We're not a Montessori. Right. But there's a curriculum. We're going to make sure that when your child gets ready for kindergarten, like they're ready. And so that's where I think that we've gotten a lot of the praise. And when you can see the director that's in there, that's putting in the sweat equity, how do you not love it? And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think. How, how, how much does like the average kid pay? Uh, back in Omaha. So every place is different. Depending in, in, on your, the in your, in your market. Yeah. So back in Omaha, the average is around 235, a month? Um, 235 a week. A week. Yeah. So you looking at definitely, I mean, but it depends on where you are as well. Cause if you go to a, like, and I don't want to, the, some of the bigger schools, right? Some of the bigger, like, national franchises and things like that. Like, and, and here's the other thing I'll say is that's on average between all of the different kids. Because if you got an infant, it's not crazy to think that you could be at 350, 350 yeah. 375 a week. But obviously, if you got school age kid, you know, that's more like 185, 195. So that's why I say, but it depends on where it is. Because, you know, if you in Texas or if you're in a high market, California... I'm sure they super tax, and so it always depends. It's relative to so like a thousand dollars, thousand dollars. I say, yeah. What, what's what's the age range? Infant to to what? Uh, so ours it goes from six weeks old to fourteen years old. I want to say. Oh. Okay. Oh, 14 is after school program? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got different rooms that kids can come in there and it's not necessarily an after school program, but we one of the ways that uh we did also be able to bring in a little bit more income is doing uh school runs. 
right? So taking kids to school in the morning and mm -hmm. also picking them up. So that's another way that you can help parents out or if as they, well. If they work early. Yep. Yeah, early drop off and late pickup. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And we're six We're six to six. Um, so we haven't even gotten into where it's, where it's like in Dallas, one of the more popular things is uh, doing 24 hours. Right. Because you got places that work third shift, things like that. But there's a lot of a lot of liability because we even talked about that in Omaha. And the biggest thing is, you know, you got to like for one of the things that, that Julie implemented as well, which is uh, something that parents love. Right. But when you come in as a staff, you have to put your cell phone in this like compartment. Right. So there's no cell phones that's in there with your kids where and we have cameras, all of that. But that shows you that the focus is on your child, not on, oh, let me just because everybody could have an excuse. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when she first implemented that, I was like, yo, like, I don't like I don't know if I'm going into a play, but the staff understand it because and teachers under, or parents understand it. Right. Why they would want that. And so I think that's one of the selling points as well that we've been able to do. Um, that's allowed us to grow so fast. Do, do y'all have a direct connection with the school districts that the day kids are in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. So I'm thinking like if this, when the kids get out of school, they're getting bused to the daycare. Yep, absolutely. Oh, okay. And I mean, we have we have branding on our vans, things like that, right? So that's the other thing. Like you'll get a call and it's like, hey, I I seen you guys are picking up that kid. My kid goes to that school. You know, um, you know, I just wanted to know what does that look like after school. What's the name of the daycare? Uh, Peekaboo Daycare. And what's the, what's the process to get certified to become a daycare in your state? Yeah, yeah. So you, there's different licensing requirements that you have to go through. Obviously, there's background checks, uh, things like that. Julie does handle most of that stuff. Like I said, I'm on the outside looking in. So if she's watching this, uh, she's definitely going to be. Because that's what it is. We yeah. knew our roles, right? Yeah. It was like, that's, I, my thing is, I know, and I know a lot of people love to ask about the daycare. And I know more from a numbers perspective. But for me, I never try to overshadow that because that is her baby. Yeah, so if we're talking about roles, I'm thinking like, all right, you have the real estate background. Mm -hmm. She obviously has the daycare background. Is this how we scale it? Do we now look for other places? Well, you go out, obviously, you're looking for more commercial real estate. We already know the infrastructure, what we need to do from the daycare standpoint. Rather than having two, let's have five, let's have ten. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm that guy of, of the five, seven, 10, 15, right? <laughs> yeah. But then she's obviously in that day-to-day. -day. She's the hiring, everything else. So I also got to be patient with her. And obviously I got my hands in a lot of other things. So it's not all of the focus of the daycare, but I got to be patient with how she wants to do it. Because like I said, it is her baby, but that is the vision, right? Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, uh, so for us, we understood that we wanted to do learning centers. So with the daycare, there's... There's so much liability with it that that's where you got to have the right teachers, right? The teachers that are teaching, not just because you, here's all it takes is one time, right? For all it takes is mm -hmm. one time, especially you got these. What, what I used to always say back in Omaha was West Omaha moms in the know, right? Mm -hmm. They got these Facebook groups. And all it takes is one time for them to say that, you know, you you was negligent with somebody's child and it could tear Sober. you down right away. Yeah. So that's why I say I got to be patient about it. But from a numbers perspective and from an impact perspective, I think it's very, very important because we see that every single day, you know, these kids are, are being shipped into the world, but they don't have the right foundation. Right. And and so that's where I think that these learning centers and these child care centers that we have is uh, is impact impactful. But again, I give her all the credit on it.